This video is going to be about sampling distributions. Now this is a direct follow-up to the videos I made on the central limit theorem, both, both the informal and formal videos. So if you haven't seen those yet, I'd recommend uh, watching those first and then coming back to this. The outline of this video is going to go with uh, recall from the central limit theorem videos that we started thinking of the single variable the sample mean as a random variable because we don't know the value of that until we observe the random variables the sample mean is composed of. We'll take that idea and we'll expand it to thinking of any statistic as a random variable. We'll give a loose definition of the sampling distribution and then we'll go back to some examples that we developed in the central limit theorem videos in R and we'll kinda make more explicit the exact ideas of the sampling distribution. So if you imagine you have x1 through xn random variables independent and identically distributed following some population distribution F. And we don't know whether that population distribution F is left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric. The central limit theorem generally doesn't care so long as the, the random variables are independent and their variance is finite, then we can largely move on. We learned from the central limit theorem videos that the following quantity, the sample mean, is to be thought of as a random variable. Since that single value is a random variable, it follows some distribution. Now what the central limit theorem told us was that this distribution for the sample mean is approximately normal. The central limit theorem tells us that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal. So what goes on the right hand side over here is abstractly named the sampling distribution. And in fact, I would like to write all of this up here so that I have space to write some more stuff below this. But lucky for us, we can change it pretty quick. So what the central limit theorem is telling us is that the sampling distribution for, specifically, the sample mean is approximately normal. We know generally the shape of the sampling distribution for the sample mean because of the central limit theorem. But the idea holds more generally. Assume you had some function t of your vector of random variables. That function t could be the sample mean or that function t could be some arbitrary function that says apply to the following vector of random variables any set of operations. For instance, the function t could be the sample mean. The function t could be the sample standard deviation. The function t could be the median. Any of these functions of your vector of random variables, the function's output itself is a new single random variable. Because we don't know what value t we're going to get out of this function until we observe the random variables it depends on, the whole thing t applied to some data is a random variable. Because that whole function t is a random variable, there is some distribution over here. Now we don't know what that distribution is in general unless there's some sort of like central limit like theorem specific for the function t. So generally we name this distribution 
for arbitrary functions t, the sampling distribution of the function t applied to some random variables. We name whatever this thing is a sampling distribution. Now we name it a sampling distribution because you randomly sample from the population and apply the function t. And if you repeated that process, go back to the central limit theorem videos and see us wrap in a for loop, sampling from the population and calculating the mean, if you repeated that process multiple times, you could have multiple evaluations of the function t. And because we're to think of them as random variables, let's just write them out without the arguments of the random variables from the underlying population. This now would be a sample from the sampling distribution. And indeed, that's how we constructed something that looked approximately normal in the central limit theorem videos, was by repeatedly sampling these evaluations of some function in the central limit theorem videos, that function was the sample mean, and then we made a density plot of the capital R statistics, which again from the central limit theorem video were sample means. So our definition of the sampling distribution is the, this is a loose definition, the pattern with which your functions of random variables follows. It is this named quantity over here that uh, the function itself follows when you think of the function of the random variables as a single random variable itself. Okay, let's dive into R where I've started from before the code that we use, generally the code, I think the population parameter is slightly different, the code that we used from before for the central limit theorem videos. So if we just look at the plot that this code makes, you see we get out something that looks roughly normal. Now code I haven't shown you is plot population, but if you go watch the video on plotting continuous uh, distributions, then you can create this plot just the same, recognizing that I'm using the exponential distribution with lambda equal to one. And so what I'm gonna really emphasize here in this example, using a library named grid extra, if you don't have it, please install it with the function install.packages. And then we can use the function grid.arrange inside the library grid extra. And we can stack with two rows the, there it goes, it updates, the population distribution up top from which we are sampling the random variables themselves is exponential with rate parameter lambda equal to one. Heavily, which kind of skew? I'll let you answer. And because here we are calculating the mean, but notice this is just a function applied to a vector of data, the sampling distribution of the sample means is approximately normal. So what we're seeing here is a representation, it's actually an approximation, of the sampling distribution for the sample mean explicitly. What we discussed in my notes earlier in this video is that theoretically you could modify this two plot figure 
by changing the mean to some other arbitrary function, let's call it t, of the vector of data. Now sample means is a poor choice of variable name for this new example, but theoretically the idea works. The only thing that needs to change from here is that function that you apply to a vector of data. Oops. As long as you change that function that you apply to the vector of data, the rest of this code will appropriately represent the population from which you're originally sampling and an approximation of the sampling distribution. Now, we're going to expand on this idea of changing this function from what was mean to some other function in the next video on the bootstrap method.